According the story about Cassandra, her saving her head is she crazy. She was manipulated into a Diddy. Want to have a little conversation about this story from about a week ago involving P. Diddy. I'm sure you know who that is. Puffy. And Cassie, professionally known as Cassie, but her real name is Cassandra Ventura. I'm sure you've heard all about it. A very wicked and sickening story, honestly, like this. Genuinely, like this story made me I'm, like sick. I'll be real. I don't know about this story. I just know that it's been a bunch of memes saying that Diddy is evil. So I would like to know why. My stomach. And I think it's really important that I cover it because I do have a mainly male audience, right? So I think it's really important to talk about these, you know, have these conversations because it, it does it does involve a man in power taking advantage of a woman in a very in a very wicked way. Before we get to that, right? Let's actually paint a picture. Let me let's yeah, go over paint, this entire paint story the together. Okay. For me, for so real. this story starts with Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie, who's a 37 year old singer, songwriter, and model. Cassie's music career was never booming all that much. She dropped she an album, her she first and only banger. album, on August 2006. It was a self titled project that had one really successful song on there. See? It's called Me and You. Me and You. That is record a picked on number three on Billboard back in 2006. Now, aside from her music career, Cassie has been a successful model ever since she became famous over 10 years ago. One of the most closely, or should I say, one of the most closely connected people to Cassie's name, however, is this man right here. Uh. P. Diddy. Puff Daddy. Actually, let me take that back because I ain't calling another nigga daddy. Puffy, <laughs> right? Sean Combs. We all know him. P. Diddy. He's a hip-hop mogul. He's a... He's, he's a sicko. <laughs> he's a sicko. Hey! Subscribe to my channel so I don't have to have ads no more, y'all. I'm too poor to, like, get premium, but I'll get it if I monetize. Help me out. I'm trying. Cassandra met Sean in 2005 when she was 19 years old, and they started officially dating in 2007 when she was 21 years old. Cassandra ended up getting signed to Bad Boy Records shortly after that, and about a year later, they officially became a couple. Sean and Cassandra were together over a decade, and in between that, they had moments of splitting up, getting back together, splitting up again, getting back together again, just for them to eventually officially split up in 2018. They were known by a lot of people as the it couple in the music industry. It's crazy because she got married, like, she got married, I think, to somebody after they broke up, which is like, you know what I mean? Ten, she wasted like 10 years with Puffy, so like, three. And crazy. the public smiles gave off the impression that they were seemingly in a happy relationship, or so we thought, okay? That's what we always think. Smiles publicly, but... Behind the scenes, you never really know what's going on. Yeah. And that's also why I never judge things off of appearance. And I don't think you should as well. On the 16th of November, he, he 2023, right now. Right now. Cassandra Ventura filed a civil lawsuit against Sean where she was claiming that he put her through over a decade's worth of violence, abuse, and other despicable things. Bro, According the story to Cassandra, about her saving her head is she crazy. was manipulated into a lifestyle that involved the provision of drugs, a whole lot of sexual abuse, and what eventually would lead to grape. So what I wanna do right now is, I wanna go over some of the bullet points in this lawsuit. I wanna go over some of the allegations coming from uh, Cassandra, right? That are- Yeah, cause I don't, we don't really, I don't really Sean know. Combs, right? P. Diddy, you know what I mean? Puffy. And uh, I'll be honest, like this is really, really graphic. So if you are sensitive to now this kind pause. of- pause, it's a graphic warning. Cause I'm gonna watch through, cause I wanna know what's happening, but like, just know, this, this is our warning. He's giving it to us right now. Stuff that's completely understandable. Just click off this video right now. But one of the bullet points, or should I say the first bullet point, says the following. Among other violent and unlawful acts, Mr. Combs graped Mrs. Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him. Oh my often God. punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Mrs. Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes and bleeding bro it's like he blew up a man's car when he learned that she was romantically interested in he like these are like like you know there's a lot of like background stories about b diddy but like this is like mobs are crazy like bro it's wild he also blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in mrs oh ventura God, by the bro. way <laughs> and this is not a funny topic but that man was kid cuddy so Diddy, Diddy literally blew up Cuddy's car because Cassie was seeing Cuddy back in 2011, and you know Diddy, he found out about he found out about this, right? And so what he did was he literally blew up, did he blew up Cuddy's car? Insane, but 
All right, so that's why you got to be careful, man. People, people with, not even people with money, like regular everyday civilians, like if you steal that girl or you doing the wrong thing or, you know, they're a little too manipulative, they will come murder you. Like, he probably thought, hey, let me get Kid Cudi out of here. I'm going to blow up his car. What if Kid Cudi was in the car? You know what I mean? Like, that's wild, bro. The lawsuit continues and says that... And not, also even, not even a part of the side of what he did to her. Like, I'm not, like, emphasizing it. But, like, that's the worst part. Like, the worst part is the beginning part. He just get crazier and crazier as it, it sounds as it go along. You know what I mean? I can't verify or deny any statements. But, like, these are wild allegations. Of forced Mrs. Ventura to engage in sex acts with male workers while masturbating and filming the encounters... He's a sicko. Sicko. He at one point also, and this is what the lawsuit continues and says, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby and demanded that Mrs. Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. And he also introduced her to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. And oh this is what they say on another specific encounter, you know, she had with Diddy, right? Cassie had this very specific encounter with Diddy and this is what happened. So this was back in September, 2018. And Cassie describes how she wanted to essentially leave Diddy, okay? And so she joined him for a dinner, right? And this dinner took place in Malibu. It was at like a, an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. And she was essentially sitting down with Diddy to, you know, bring the news to him. Like, hey, I'm done. This relationship is done. We've been through this. You've done, you've did this to me. So she was going to deliver this news to him, okay? So they went to this restaurant. And in Cassie's mind, this was going to be the final conversation and the final goodbye. However, things turned pretty dark. After they finished eating, they apparently went back to her apartment, which Diddy had paid for. And he allegedly forced himself inside, tried to kiss her, and... She attempted to push him away because yeah, he was okay. uncomfortable, Makes right? Yeah. And Diddy, allegedly, decided to forcibly rip her clothes off and unbuckled his belt. He then proceeded oh to grape God, her bro. as she was attempting at pushing him away and telling Sir him to Robin stop. P. Diddy, Cassie, bro, after like, that, took deliberate allegedly. steps to completely just cut herself off from Diddy because this was the final straw. Yeah, like according to her, right? Like this was she had been through so wow. much with this man. He had put her through so much. And at this moment in September 2018, after this happened, she was done. So she took the steps in order to completely cut herself off from Diddy. And she did so by leaving the home that he paid for her. And she returned the car he had purchased, purchased for her. Because apart from the house that he bought for her, which was under his this, name, this right? This is, that's probably why he felt so comfortable doing these things, allegedly. He had also purchased a car for her. And uh, she... Turned the car back. She left yeah. the house and you gotta do what you gotta do. Done. Subscribe to my channel. That's what we gonna say every ad. Diddy, according to this lawsuit, created a flyer for a party that was supposed to be hosted by Cassie in Miami. But the thing about this event she was gonna host was it wasn't real. It was oh, a man. smoke screen in order to get Cassie over to Miami, Miami. so Diddy could have him have her, I should say, all to himself, right? It was allegedly used as a ploy to get Cassie to fly to Miami. So Diddy wanted, essentially Diddy wanted to create a little bit of distance between her then boyfriend at the time, which I believe it was actually Ryan Leslie, right? L Ryan Leslie. I have no right? idea. So he created this fake poster and he got her to Miami. So she flew to Miami thinking oh that- goodness. She flew to Miami like- so she know, she knew, like, you know if you book for an event, no? She was going to host an event, but turns out that Diddy just wanted her all to himself. But anyway, she flew to Miami, she met up with Diddy, and uh, she apparently, allegedly, she ended up being sexually abused by Diddy after he provided her with copious amounts of drugs. And then on another instance, after a party with Jay-Z, Diddy allegedly brutally beat Cassie inside an Escalade by kicking and hitting her. He then allegedly forced her out of the vehicle. Oh my god. Diddy is like a mobster. Allegedly. Like, he's a mobster. 
And they, this ain't this ain't just one story. It's just the the Cassie story. She then caught a cab to her apartment where she spent the next several days in isolation, terrorized, and she was traumatized after this experience, right? And then we have another situation where he allegedly pushed Cassie into the corner of a vehicle and stomped her face in. Mm. Diddy's security guard apparently tried to stop this and he tried to de-escalate the situation but failed to do so. Cassie allegedly tried to run and he kicked her in the face once again. The lawsuit states that Cassie was bleeding profusely to the point where she began I wonder how, like, because we're getting all these, these are all, I'm assuming these are, like, stuff from her case. I wonder how they're giving the evidence of all this, like, the stories, like, this, like, these are, like, mind-boggling stories, like, baffling, like, oh, my gosh, how did you endure all this for so long? So I wonder how the evidence is being shown. And throwing up as a result of the violent assault. The lawsuit then goes on to state that Diddy panicked after realizing that he had just left physical proof of his abuse and that allegedly prompted him to isolate cassandra in a hotel suite in los angeles for an entire week so the injuries of this brutal beating could heal and the tangible evidence of abuse was non-existent and by the way according to cassie everyone who worked around puff knew exactly what was going on they all knew what was going on on another instance diddy had this thing that he liked to indulge in okay you could call it a fantasy a fetish whatever the fantasy in question is called voyeurism. And for anyone who doesn't know what voyeurism is, let me I don't know the definition like... of it. It's essentially when you get pleasure from watching other people engage in sexual activity. Mm. And according to this lawsuit, Diddy stated that it would turn him on if he saw Cassie with another dick. Oh my And so God. he allegedly arranged this thing called a freak off. So Diddy had Cassie himself and a male sex worker wear a masquerade mask and uh while they're all high on some kind of drugs, Diddy was allegedly directing Cassie to perform sexual acts on this unknown man, and he was in a cut just enjoying the show. And by the way, this freak off thing was a common occurrence, and each session lasted is this for all days. Is this and all in the like papers that he's reading, or is this like assumptions? That's really my question. Like, because everything else is like on the paper. Like, this is what she's saying. He said he did. Blase, blase. Is she saying this too? Cause this is like it just gives you a wilder and wilder like i don't know man and uh yeah this is only a few instances from the 35 page lawsuit. oh no this is all in the 35 pages this is like she is saying that this happened which is wild it's like it's crazy man is this what once you get up in the in the world like is this like you have so much money that you find like let me do let me, let me, let me i can do what i want you know what i mean i got all this money I can make people do what I want to do. I just, it's crazy, man. Against Diddy by uh, Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie. So, you know how they say innocent until proven guilty? Although I stand by that in every single situation because I'm not the law, can you really even make something like this up? Like, That's what I'm saying. Can you make this lawsuit, up? Man, it's absolutely mind-boggling and obviously despicable. My heart goes out to Cassie because I refuse to believe that this is all fiction. It's way too descriptive. There's too many intricate details in here, man. And also it doesn't help that Diddy's reputation has been highly questionable ever since he got in the industry. Everything from the alleged rumors that he was involved in the attempted hit on Pac's life in 1994 to things of this nature, Diddy has been getting the side eye his entire career rightfully so why would she come out now after all these years that's, that's what, what a question. lot of people are asking yeah. and i think that's a very lousy question for the simple oh, fact that fault. you can't put a timeline on someone's courage that's to speak true. out about going through something like this the only thing is like yeah you can say it when you want to say it but i'm just so because they've been separated for a while I, I just don't know like what made it come up now or why it didn't come up a year later or why it didn't come up after they broke up i said i i it's a real question for me i'm sorry if it's a lousy question but like I just want to know, you know what I mean? Like, you can do what you want to do, but why this time, I guess. When someone goes through something that's as traumatic as this, sometimes they don't speak out at all and take it to their grave because who's going to believe them? Other that's times true. they do, but it's way after they've overcame the emotional trauma that was caused upon them. Because it actually takes a lot out of you to open up about something like this. And from what I know, when a woman gets taken advantage of and abused in this fashion, it's actually not just the event that's traumatizing. Yeah. It's the fact that I, she I, now I, I has to that. come to terms that. with what was done to her. And then she gotta tell everybody else, so I guess, I get what he's saying. Then she gotta tell everybody else, and it's a whole ordeal, so it's going through like another 
point she's going through something all over again. She got to go through 10 years of it. So I, get, I feel you. Know After you. the fact, that's even more traumatizing. So the heinous act itself being done to her is one thing, but the mental anguish that comes as a result of the abuse is another thing. So she doesn't go through it once, she goes through it twice. In Cassie's case, well, we're unfortunately not talking about a one-off situation. This is something that allegedly happened over the span of a decade, so I can't even imagine what that could do to a human being's brain. The fact that there are so many people who allegedly witnessed this is also very sad. Those are what we call enablers. Not one person had the guts to go against Diddy when he was allegedly doing all this to Cassandra. It's crazy, and it tells you a lot about how dark the music industry can get. Everything is pay to play, or pay to hush in this case. And I'm realizing more and more how a lot of the responsibility is on on us as men in terms of when or if we see behaviors from other dudes that they could be on something like this all right so like y'all y'all tell me what y'all think because you know uh this is my bottom to be honest because there's so many stories every year about p diddy and and what he does and what happens behind the scenes but this is public now like this is like she's saying this she's bringing it through a lawsuit so you know is this all a legend right now but like y'all let me know do y'all believe what she's talking about or do y'all not I would love to hear y'all thoughts. Let's let's go ahead in the comments. So leave a comment, but until next time.